welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on this book, 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste. So I've had a chance to read through it and sort of find some items that I'm going to be trying out. Some suggestions that she mentioned in the book to move towards a more zero waste life. So like I said, I chose a few and I'm going to be trying them out. So the first recommendation I'm going to go over is doing a trash audit. So I've saved all of my recycling from the whole month of February. I'm going to go through it and see if there's any changes that I can make to cut down on my recycling. And So I separated everything out. These are all the paper goods. So like the boxes for my sparkling waters. I used a soap bar, so that's the paper for that. We got a can opener. My dad got me a new little espresso maker. Um, the box from some candles. This is from my Earth Hero order. They actually reused this box and I'm probably gonna leave this out of the recycling and try to reuse it again to ship something out maybe one of my orders from depop we got a new shower head so that's the box from that i haven't broken that one down yet uh this is all of the junk mail that we got in the month of february so all of this all of these ads were sent to us without wanting them sent to us and i don't really use them so it's a total waste I'm still trying to figure out how to get them to stop sending this stuff to us. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm really looking to try to get this cut down to way less, if not none, because I don't use it. Next, I have all the cans from our sparkling waters. And in here I have some cans from like garbanzo beans and other canned goods like corn, stuff like that. All aluminum that can be recycled together over here is our plastic waste for the month of February we got this before I got the zero waste detergent from my local refillery so we had to finish it up and now it's gonna get recycled I still need to wash it off before I send it to the recycling this was before I started getting my rice in bulk I got one of these and just some like produce that I got in plastic that this one they didn't have a plastic free option that's when I went to Trader Joe's to try to get everything for the week from Trader Joe's so they didn't have any plastic free radishes so I got that this is from basil plant some bitchin sauce I reused this a couple times but it started to degrade a little bit and I was scared it was leaching into my food so I'm gonna recycle that these two were from a day that I forgot my water bottle at work. That was the only option, so I had to use them. And then I have some reusable plastic bags. These all either have like holes in them or just aren't usable again, so I'm recycling them. Over here is the glass. So we went through a bottle of Frank's Red Hot, some oils, and then I got a Topo Chico one night when we had Mexican food. I also have the little scraps from that thrift flip that I made one of my videos a while back. I just included that in here. So that was everything in my recycling for the month of February. It was definitely eye-opening to have everything all at once for the whole month instead of just like week by week or whenever it gets full emptying it out. There's definitely some things that I have to try to work on like trying to get the junk mail somehow not sent to me. Um, some other things I couldn't really control like this. We needed a can opener, so I bought this one. This was the best out of the options that I had and we really needed a can opener like in that moment. So this was kind of unavoidable and it's not something that's consistently happening. So something like the junk mail or like detergent that's coming in a plastic bottle, something to work on but like other things that are a little bit unavoidable. I'm not being as harsh on myself for like aluminum. This is super recyclable and, and I don't feel as bad as if I was using detergent in plastic continually. So yeah, some things to work on, some things that I've already started changing like the detergent. I already have a good zero waste option that I'm using now. So I'm not gonna be continuing to create that plastic waste. And some things that are kind of one-offs that won't continue in the next months, but some things that will, uh, like the 
cans. I buy a lot of things in cans. Aluminum super recyclable, so that's not too bad. But yeah, that's everything. Um, this was pretty helpful in trying to cut down on my waste, like she said in the book. So I think it's a really good idea to do a waste audit, especially letting things build up over a month and then looking at what you've done over a full month because that's sort of cyclical. So number 36 in the book is razors. So basically it says to buy a safety razor instead of using disposable razors that have plastic in them and only last about a week or a couple uses. And for the safety razor it says to make a razor bank. This is so you can recycle the razor blades without potentially harming the workers that are sorting through the recycling. So the directions on how to make a razor bank state that first you get a can of something that's liquid like broth or tomato sauce cut a split in it with an exacto knife and then you dump out the contents of the can and then rinse it out and tip it over so it dries out thoroughly so i have that here this is what mine looks like i'm gonna take the label off so now this is what mine looks like i have some razor blades that i've used and i'm gonna go ahead and put them in here i made sure to measure before cutting the slot so that i could easily fit them in here just drop them in and once this fills up which it's gonna take a long time to fill this up even though this is a smaller can it's still gonna take a while because they are so small but in the book it says once it fills up to put a piece of tape over the top so nothing falls back out and then it doesn't say this in the book but I'm gonna write razor blades on the outside just so they know when it goes through the sorting facility to be careful with this because it does contain sharp items but those are some things you can do to take away the waste from razors and razor blades. Safety razors are a great alternative because they have no plastic and they're an investment purchase which means that you buy the one item and you take care of it and clean it and repair it instead of tossing it out and continuing to buy new ones like the plastic razors that get tossed out. My safety razor I got a razor like kit and it was $85 for the razor, the blades, I got like a pack of 50 I think it was with it and then a shaving soap and a bag. So that was $85. So that's an investment purchase that I made and I have razors that should last me the whole year. So I'm really saving a lot of money in the long run because that $85 is going to last me year after year instead of just wasting money in throwaway items that are also harming the planet. Next up is number nine. So it's find your bulk bins. I've recently switched over to this method of getting grains and, and other items that you can find in the bulk bins. I've, I've also bought brown sugar from the bulk bins. It's super easy. You just take your jars or canvas bags with you. Make sure you have the tear, which means weighing them empty so you know what you can remove from the total weight once you put the item in it. The method I like to do is taking my canvas bags to the store filling them up and then taking them back home and filling up my mason jars. I feel like this is safer and you're less likely to break the jars on the transport there and back with using canvas bags instead. And it's less weight, so it's easier to kind of carry around with you. So the process for getting your items from the bulk bin is taking your bags or jars Weighing them, getting the tear so you know what to remove from the total weight after you put the products in the bags or jars. And then you fill up the containers with whatever you're purchasing. And then you make sure you write down the PLU or bin number. That's what the cashier uses to properly charge you for the items that you're buying. And then you go to the checkout, you give them all the items, they weigh them, they remove the tear weight and then charge you with the correct price per ounce or pound, depending on what item you're getting. And that's how you use the bulk bins. It's pretty simple. And a lot of people don't have access to bulk bins. It's not a requirement to be zero waste. A lot of times you can buy in bulk and have items that come in plastic or paper. I used to buy my flour in the paper bags in big quantities so that I'm cutting down on my waste but it's still paper so it's still a recyclable like decomposable product instead of buying it in a plastic bag so 
Zero Waste more is focusing on doing better and doing more instead of following a very strict set of rules. So whatever you're doing, again, is better than not doing anything at all and better than just buying all plastic items. So that's the bulk bins. Number 14 is paper towels. This is something that I switched from a few months ago. I have this little basket that I got at an estate sale hanging in my kitchen and it holds washcloths in it. I made the switch without purchasing new items. I already had a whole bunch of washcloths and that's what I use. I didn't buy any of the unpapered towels or trendy items that are sort of circulating through the zero waste community. I found that a lot of these items I already have and can repurpose or use in new ways that are saving things from going to the landfill. So that's what I did for this switch. I have all of my colored like non-white washcloths that I use for my face as a replacement to napkins, all of those sort of things that you wouldn't use like cleaner on. And then all of my white washcloths, which I have a large stack of, I use for cleaning and grosser things that I wouldn't want to mix with things that I wipe my face with, if that makes sense. That's basically what she covers in here is that you can, instead of using paper towels, you can replace them with either rags or cloth in order to take away from the massive amounts of paper towel waste that we create in our households. She recommends cotton towels, which these are, these are 100% cotton. And once they kind of fall apart, then they can decompose back into the earth. They don't have any plastic in them. She mentions that she doesn't recommend using microfiber towels because that's a synthetic plastic fiber textile, which of course can leach into things and when washed can create microplastic that ends up in our waterways. So in addition to my washcloths, I've also made my own like unpapered towels. So I took some, this one is made from an old kitchen towel that I hand dyed myself. And then I had some leftover flannel fabric from a project. So I sewed the two layers together and this is a really soft napkin. I've also used old cotton t-shirts for the top layer and those have held up pretty well. It's really all about using what you already have and purchasing things that are made of natural fibers and being able to reuse them. So that's what I've done with these. These are what I use instead of paper towels for all kinds of things in the house, including cleaning and like n actual napkins. And of course, these washcloths are a lot sturdier than the paper towel option. They're not gonna rip apart and they can really hold a lot more water and liquid from like a spill or anything like that. So I actually really love this alternative and I'm happy that I switched. These are a lot better than paper towels and they're a lot better for the environment. So next is number 38, it's lotion. She mentions a few options in here about some DIYs and things, but I wanted to mention what I use, which is my Flower Bandit lotion bar. I'm getting a little low on this one, but you still get the idea. It's a solid form of lotion that's kept in this metal tin. It has four simple ingredients in it, fair trade shea butter, and a Lilo wax, which is a plant-based wax instead of beeswax it's a vegan version organic virgin hemp oil and organic virgin olive oil so just four simple ingredients in this bar this is super versatile and portable i use it on my face my body my lips as chapstick it's really a useful product and it stays in the tin so you can take it with you wherever you go and you don't have to worry about it spilling because it's a concentrated solid form, it lasts a really long time. I've had this one for about six months so far and I use it almost every day. This is of course my brand and I really wanted to focus on being zero waste. So we do have a refill system where you can buy just the lotion bar without the tin. So this tin I've used about four times now. I've had four different lotion bars in here. It's a little beat up, but it's perfectly useful. And I really limited the waste that I've had I haven't had any waste with this one because I've been reusing the same tin that I had the original one in. And if this ever gets crushed or beat up too much, I can always recycle it because it is aluminum. So lotion bars are a great alternative to wasteful lotion. 
foundation that comes with the water already in it. Just like shampoo and conditioner, solid forms are always more eco-friendly because you're not wasting the water that's in them. You're not wasting the emissions that it takes to ship the water that's in the product when you could have a more concentrated formula. This is just a really great product, especially for sensitive skin. It doesn't have any fragrance or weird chemicals in it. It's all natural, just four ingredients. And so you know what you're getting with this and it is vegan. So vegan, cruelty-free, handmade, can't say anything more. I am a little biased, it is my company, but I love lotion bars and that's why I make them. Next is number three, it's Say No to Straws. This is one of the more basic and easy ones you can do. Instead of getting plastic straws with your takeout items or even just at home using plastic straws, using a reusable straw is great. They have silicone, metal, glass, bamboo versions, all kinds of different straws. I like to use the glass ones because it doesn't change the flavor of the item you're drinking like stainless steel and bamboo can sometimes do. So again, this is a pretty simple way to cut down on plastic use. The last one that I'm gonna cover in this video is exfoliation, that's number 45. She has a recipe in here that I wanted to try out for a coffee scrub. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's get to it. So it's two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of coffee grounds, and then one tablespoon of oil. And then we're gonna mix it all together. So this is what it looks like, sort of just like liquidy, oily coffee grounds and let's go try it out so i got my hands and arms a little bit wet and turned off the water now i'm going to take a little bit of this in my hand and sort of just scrub it all around now i'm gonna rinse it off so my arms definitely feel smoother and softer, very moisturized from the oil in it. I don't know how often I'll use it because I don't exfoliate very often, but when I do, I'll definitely use this recipe again. So those are some of the swaps that I made at the suggestion of this book, 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste by Katherine Kellogg. This isn't sponsored and I really wanna give her credit uh, this book is great. I got it from Earth Hero. It's a zero waste supplies website. I definitely recommend buying the book. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. I only just graced the top of it. Lots of recipes and lots of swaps you might not normally think of. I definitely think it's a great purchase and I'm glad I bought it and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you've done any of these swaps, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about them. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I come out with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Saturday. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye!